everybody. Uh, welcome uh, to the Virtual Sleep Computational Biology Seminar Series. Today we have the pleasure to have um, Philippe Lemercier, who kindly accepted to give a talk on one of the SIB resources. So I will briefly go through his uh, bio. So um, he did a, a study and did a master in, and a PhD in virology at the, institu at the Institut Pasteur in Paris where he worked on the reverse genetics of uh, rabies virus. Then he moved on uh, for a postdoc at the Department of Microbiology and Molecular Medicine at the University of Geneva, where he worked on the reverse genetics uh, of another virus called Sendai. Um, then in 2004, um, he moved again and, and became curator at uh, SwissProt at uh, the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics in Geneva where I worked there for uh, four years. And then since uh, 2008, is um, is the head of the virus program at the uh, SwissProt and UniProt KB um, at the same uh, place at the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics in Geneva. Um, so I'm very happy you're here and the floor is yours. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm going to present you the Web Resource VR Zone from the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. So the main topics of this web resource is to bring together the textbook biological knowledge with the sequence from the sequence database, so to put all the data together and uh, to allow to mix them. So uh, for example, on Valzone, you get some taxonomic index. The bread and butter of Valzone are fact sheets. This is a Flavie virus fact sheet. And these fact sheets are linked to sequences from Uniprot to some analysis tools and many features. So why having a resource specifically dedicated to viruses? It's because these entities are quite diverse, very much diverse and cellular entities, and uh, <coughs> there's a lot of hidden knowledge about it. So we need people who are needing some, um, some sort of resource to, to reflect that. So <coughs> This is the shape of human viruses. They are to the, to the scale on, on this slide. For the rest, are not to the scale when they are put together. So you see Ebola virus is, is very quite big compared to others. You see the variola virus, which has disappeared. The herpes, rabies. These are respiratory viruses and measles as well. HIV, influenza, or adenovirus. And you see some hepatitis or poliovirus are quite small. So that you see between a, a parvovirus and Ebola, it's extremely different. So their biology are different and their origins are very different. That's why uh, we, we built up this resource. So this is the homepage of Balzone, uh, in which you have a classification called the Baltimore, which is virus specific for access to different viruses. You can make search as well, and you have a lot of different links. <coughs> you have the molecular process pages, which are sort of control vocabulary, I will detect you later, on replication cycle. So for, for this talk, I will focus on Ebola virus because it's quite a star these days with what's happening with this last outbreak. So for example, to access Ebola, we could access by several means, but you can just type into the search box, and, and uh, it's a smart search. It proposes you different things. So with Ebola virus, you will end up with that. So I will give you access to fact sheets for either the genus, the family, or the whole Baltimore. So what is the Baltimore? Baltimore is a, a, a very specific classification. The reason is that for cellular organisms, you have a unique common ancestor called LUCA. And you can, you can reflect all of, of the cellular organisms from one ancestor. For viruses, it's not at all the case. On the tree of life, viruses would be like an IV. I mean, several routes and going from branches to branches all the time and changing, jumping from others. So it's quite complicated. And it's not a dichotomic uh, history like we have for cellular organisms. And that's why we needed <coughs> some kind of classification. Also, they're extremely variable in sequence. So this is just to, to show you. This is a higher eukaryote mutation rate compared to genome size, lower eukaryotes and prokaryotes. And you see that viruses are going very, very deep in mutation possibilities at each replication cycle, especially RNA viruses. <coughs> so 
So the, ba the, the classification we have for all of them is called the Baltimore, because it was named after the Nobel Prize David Baltimore. Um, and basically, it's based on the nature of nucleic acid inside the virus. So you get all sorts of possibilities. For cellular organisms, you just have double-strand DNA. But viruses, they got all possibilities. Single-strand DNA, double-strand RNA, negative strand or positive strand RNA, and, and reverse, reverse transcriptase. There are two kinds of possibilities. So this is a, a slide depicting how, how these organisms are, are making messenger RNA. So knowing the Baltimore group tells you how the virus has to deal with molecular biology to express messenger RNA and things like that. So there are things in common in this group, but they are not necessarily um, of the same origin as well. So in viral zone, these buttons correspond to the Baltimore classification. And here we have negative strand RNA viruses. <coughs> and that's where Ebola virus is. Also, you get influenza virus. You get a rabies virus here. So on, on these pages, I've put um, <coughs> color codes. And you see pink means that it infects human. And yellow is for insects, green for plants, and, and things like that. So you see this kind of virus that don't infect bacteria, for example, or archaea. It's just a karyot, even not smaller karyot, just, uh, just higher karyots. <coughs> So when you click, you, you get into the Ebola fact sheet. So uh, you get several things. You get uh, access to, uh, to a picture depicting the variant, the genome, uh, different vocabulary concerning gene expression or replication, links, on, on some inf information on disease, host, and things like that, and access to sequences and, and reference strains as well. So for example, on this little tags, you can click to get access to the protein sequences. And you have two kinds of, of listing, either by, by strain. So you get here the reference strain of the Ebola virus. And you get all the nine uh, genes of the virus. Or he, here you can just look at the polymerase, and you get all the polymerase curated in Swiss plot or the nucleoprotein. And you get some tools you can align, retrieve, and things like that. So you can see either by protein or by organisms. So this virus is quite small, just nine upon ring frames. So it's easy to see that that way. <coughs> so we have graphics, which are quite popular, actually, depicting the virion, the shape and the dimension, and the genome as well. As I told you, many viruses are very small, so it's, it's quite easy to show the genome. If you would do that for human, it would be a nightmare to look at. But for, for this small, it's quite easy. You see that the colors are the same in the virion and, and in the genome. So you can see, <coughs> uh, for example, the nucleoprotein is green. So it's here. You see where it is in the, in the virion. Or the glycoprotein is, is yellow. You see it's on the surface and so on. These pictures are not just made to be beautiful, but they are meant to reflect the real uh, the real shape of the vine. For example, I'm using as, as much as possible cryo-OM pictures to but uh, the, the images. And, and uh, only the nucleic acid are not too scale because you will, it would be too tiny to, to be seen. <coughs> Just to show, so we have 100 of virion uh, pictures to, to show you the diversity. For example, you have some plant viruses they got several capsids because they got a segmented genome. So each segment is in different capsids. You have uh, rotaviruses, for example, which are infecting your gastrointestinal tract. And you see that there are three layers of capsid, which makes them quite resistant to your digestive system because they have three layers to get off because you can inactivate. Uh, you have M13, much used in laboratory, which is a completely filamentous virus and many others. Uh, again, some other. This is Archaea variants, quite special. We don't know much about them. This is the papilloma, the ones making warts in your, in your skin, the herpes viruses. And uh, these are the common bacterial viruses, the codovirales, you have three kinds of them. The bacillovirus, which is used in, in, in laboratories as well. And this is the mimivirus, 
So I told you it's not to scale because the universe will be very big otherwise. So <clears throat> beside this graphical information, we have uh, more <clears throat> interesting information in the form of control vocabulary and everything which is specific to virus biology. Okay, because we consider that the cellular biology, the common biology, the ribosome translation is, would be known, and we just focus on things that are specific in terms of this virus, that, that a common cellular uh, biologist would not be able to, to, to know. So, <coughs> in this text, we have gene expression or replication that are linked to control record library pages, on which you get some pictures depicting what's happening, some text, links to publications, and sometimes a listing of all different viruses doing the same thing. So, for example, this is influenza. You can see how it creates poly A by special ways, special VR ways, how it's stealing the, the cap of messenger RNA. So the cells are really able to defend themselves by, by um, finding that the cap is not of cellular origin. So influenza is stealing cellular caps. So it, it's quite fine. So I, I brought to the different kind of, of uh, vocabulary we have. We have a vocabulary special for entry, so all the different ways of virus can use to entry in all the cells. Um, so basically, they enter by, they trigger uh, uh, what we call a hit me signal. Actually, they don't really actively able to enter a cell because they, are, they don't have enzymes, they're quite static. So they, they manage to bind something on the cell that triggers eat me signal. And the cell actually then do the job of eating the virus. So you just do nothing. Just have to uh, cross the membrane after all. That's the only function it has. Then um, the control recovery corresponding to replication, transcription, and translation. So you see cellular process uh, are using mainly bidirectional replication, and the virus are using, because of the nature of their genome, a wide variety of, of different replication mechanisms, as well as the transcription. And uh, translation, they are really fooling the ribosome in many different ways. So they are very small, so they are able to, to make the most of their coding sequence by fooling the ribosome, by making frame shift, backward editing, whatever you, you imagine. And so they get many, they are able to get many proteins from one gene with special tricks. So the exit pathways, so the worst one would be the lysis. That's where a virus is actually hurting the host because uh, like influenza, so are often lysing your cells. That's what makes you sick. Uh, some are using exocytosis or more, more simple or Others are using cell to cell, so they don't get out actually. It's mainly in fungus and plants. <coughs> so, how do we really link that knowledge to the sequence data? Because this is human views of, uh, of knowledge, the, the real zone fact sheets. So, we're using the control vocabulary, so here with Yarshi core. <coughs> and for that, uh, we have we have we used three kind of uh, of control vocabulary that are linked together. So these are the virus and fact sheets that are, I show you, which is kind of contextualization, and with the virus and vocabulary. So this vocabulary is completely linked to Uniprot keywords. So we have the same concept in Uniprot keywords and in Go terms, and all of those are linked together. So it means we have uh, like 200 uh, concepts that are linked by a viral zone. So you can go, if you get this concept in Go, you can go back into viral zone and then in Uniport or whatever, because they are linked together. So the way we are curating that is we are reading the literature. It's manual curation. We are using Uniprot editor to put the keywords in Uniprot. Um, the, the Go annotation is either made manually or by protein to Go. So if we put a keyword which is linked to Go automatically, the goal would be there, but it will be an automatic link. There would be no publication associated with that. And we, of course, make our zone memory. So we do all together. This is an example of uh, the control vocabulary, which uh, link. So you see um, under the boxes, it's not very seen, but 
you have the, the keyword uniplot, the go term on the viral zone page ID. So for many of them, you got the, the three. For some of them, you don't have, for example, a go term because it's too much in detail and it's not the purpose of go to go that way, or uh, different things. But main, mainly, all of them get three uh, addresses. <clears throat> the way it works is that so in viral zone, you get a interaction menu, for example, with various interaction, you can get to details. And here you have links to all entries related to that in Uniprot through the keyword, or to all entries related to the Go term, which are the same list, actually. It's quite different views, but they are the same list of protein because they are linked together. And you can browse from Go to viral zone to Uniprot and so on. Uh, we have a sidebar as well, right, which gives a lot of small information, like links to uh, some bio-specific pages or, or resources, uh, taxonomy. We have reference train, I will depict a little bit more after, some information on host and disease. So reference trains are uh, reference proteomes now. Uh, they are because we got a lot, lot of, of virus entries and virus complete genome in the database because Virus are small, so it's easy to get that. And each year, for example, influenza, we have like 40,000, 50,000 uh, entries getting in. So uh, the question a user is, if I were, were to look at one, one uh, annotation, which one should I get? Uh, so this is, a ref this is a purpose of reference protein. This is a gold dot standard. We put all the data, the go term, the keywords, and the papers. We try to put everything in that sequence so users can get access to it. Otherwise, it's split between many, uh, many viruses. So for example, hepatitis C, we are unable to make culture, cell culture of hepatitis C. So we just have samples taken from human cases. It means that every laboratory of the world have a different hepatitis B. Sorry, it's hepatitis B. And when you try to put the, the paper related to each, each, each strain, so you get 100 on strain, and each one show a little bit of information. So for a user to get it back, it will mean they have to go all through them. So we put everything in reverse of reference strain, and the fact that it's not this strain that's, that showed up, it, it was showed up, is indicated anyway. But at one place, you get most of the knowledge of hepatitis B. It's still a true real, uh, real entry? Yes. No, no. Yes, it's true and true in which we put every knowledge and we still trace that back to the original strain. Of course, meaning that we, we think that the function is shared. Otherwise, we would not do that. So, for example, in influenza, you got uh, 400,000 entries right now. Some of them are reviewed. And the golden standard only 13 restrain on three of Puerto Rico. Um, the fun about influenza is that you see it's, it's quite small. Um, there are only, uh, <coughs> only eight uh, segments of influenza encoding for 12 to 14 proteins. So you see that the ribosome or alternative splicing are uh, doing a lot of interplay to, to make many different proteins from one gene. And the fun that influenza has been studying molecular since more than 30 years. And it's only, you see, eight segments. And we keep discovering new open reading frame that. I mean, in the 12, uh, 14, you have like four, uh, six, four proteins that have been discovered in the last three years. So uh, good luck with the human genome, because it's very small. And we keep getting new things, which tend to be important for most of them. So in the end of the day, we got. We got 401, OK, we didn't manage to make 400 uh, reference proteome that are supposed to represent all known viruses. So I say known viruses, I mean the one which are being classified and studied. Of course, it's just a part of, of the virosphere, which seems to be quite big. Um, and it comprised 16 proteins. So uh, it's most of the diversity, it reflects most of the diversity of uh, of biology, of non-biology today. <coughs> we 
when we have more than 2 million open running frame seconds in, in the databases. So this is a, what it calls the biosphere. It, it's also a Baltimore classification with small graphics of different viruses. <coughs> um, we have some replication cycle for a few viruses. It takes a lot of time to do that. So for example, this is the one for Ebola. So again, we link to the control vocabulary and we get some pop-up and things like that. So uh, Ebola, it's quite simple. It's, it triggers the hit me signal by micropinocytosis because it's quite big, so it's not going to be able to enter an endosome or things like that. <coughs> so the cell actually captured it. And, um, I'm always losing that. And put it inside. Then the virus is making a fusion. So that's where only activity it has. This is a fusion, which is quite standard in viruses, enveloped viruses, I mean. And uh, then it can start directly in the cytoplasm. It's replication because it's all RNA. It's RNA business, so it can go uh, in most cells. Most cells, it's working quite fine. All the cells are making RNAs, pretty much. So they get uh, ribonucleotide as much as they can. So they just uh, replicate. They make um, a full blocking of uh, antiviral systems, interferon signaling on RNA sensor, and then they are able to, to get out and to often lies the cell at the end. <clears throat> so this is very important. The, the way the virus interacts with the host, because it really determines the success of the virus or the host in the, the cooperation between the two organisms into the interaction. And actually, the modern cells have a, a very big antiviral defense, it's very heavy. And for a virus to get into human cells, for example, you need a handful of keys to, to get down all this antiviral system and to enter specifically and things like that. So it's, very, it, it's a race of arms between the cell and the viruses. So for example, for influenza virus, you know that human influenza are not like avian influenza. We are not really susceptible to avian influenza. And for several reasons, we have difference in cyclic acid receptors in mammals compared to avian. And in human, a few million years ago, we lost a gene encoding for a neuraminic acid. So it's just lot in human and not in other mammals. And it seems to prevent most avian influenza again to enter. Only ferrets have lost the same gene, so that's why ferrets are good model for a human influenza. Otherwise, human influenza is just for human. So you see, we lost the gene. It means that we are much less susceptible to zoonotic influenza, which is quite good for species. But the virus managed to create a special human strain. So it's still a bit better, I think, because you are susceptible to human strain, but not all the circulating strains. But you cannot really silence viruses. They manage to, to evolve very quickly. So there are a lot of, of differences, and viruses have a lot of counter differences. <coughs> Just to, uh, for the, to show the difference, this is a HIV replication cycle which is more, more studied, actually, much more than Ebola. Because Ebola, uh, to study Ebola, you have to, to work on a, on a P4, and uh, it's quite, quite heavy and difficult to do that, because it's very dangerous viruses. Uh, when for HIV, you can work in a P3 on a million of dollars on HIV, so we have much more knowledge. But you see, it's quite different. This one, it has to enter into the nucleus of the cell, so that's where not all the cells are able to be susceptible because you need, uh, you need to cross uh, this uh, nuclear pore. On, on, some, uh, on some cells, it's not allowed for the virus to do that. So he has a lot of countermeasure as well to be able to, to do this stuff. And then he has to get out as well. So these are quite different things for, for HIV. And it's dedicated to, to T lymphocyte. So you have a handful of keys to enter T lymphocyte, but not other tissues. <clears throat> so we are arrive at the end. So in viral zone, besides all these systems, we have also developed a few e-learning. Um, we have some phylogenetics and blast multiple alignment. For example, for blast multiple alignment, we have 100 learning pages. And it, this course has been created in collaboration with uh, FAO and, and, and uh, EAOA and focused on animal viruses. So 
So we have at the end, so the statistics of, of our zone, we have, we have 407 various pages, fact sheets, and about 100 viral families, uh, more than 2,000 static web pages, because you have like four static web pages for each, each genus and all the control vocabulary and things like that, a lot of unique pictures. Um, the number of visits is increasing every year. We still did not hit the, the roof. It will happen someday, but we are at 26,000 visits per month and a lot of page views for, for many countries, but it's mainly like 37% from the US. And the second is like 6%. So it really, a lot of virologists must be in the US. I don't know. They like it. And um, so thank you for your attention. This is the Parzo team. So thanks to <coughs> the curation team, Chantal Hulot and Patrick Masson. Uh, <coughs> Edouard de Castro is making all the, the programmation stuff. And uh, Lydie Bougelray is a Swissport operation director and Yohannis Gisenarios, the group leader of Swissport. <coughs>